Hey you guys, I'm here at my parents' house and I've been asking my dad for a long time now to share his Rendlesham Forest UFO story with us because he had an experience back when we lived in England. Actually, I actually think it was before I was born, maybe? I'm not sure, we'll find out. No, when I lived there? My mom's shaking her head when I live there. So anyway, I've been wanting him to tell the story for a long time because there's a lot, there's a um, documentary out now and a book out about the Rendlesham Forest UFO incidents that happened in the 80s in uh, Bentwaters, England. And so he's finally willing to tell the story. So let's get to the juicy story. You ready? I'm ready. You were like three years old. I was three years old? Three or four. No, she was, no, it wasn't she when was we a first year. Yeah. When we first got there, it was not very far after. Well, she was what six months when we got. She was six so months. She was I was a year. Yeah, about a year old. So, I was uh, assigned to the presidential security detail at Andrews Air Force Base, Maryland, where I worked uh, f flying security for the aircraft that went around the world with dignitaries. I flew a lot with the vice president, that was Walter Mondale at the time. And at the end of the four years that I spent at Andrews, I got a promotion to Master Sergeant and got reassigned to Royal Air Force Bentwaters in the UK. So in July of 1981, I, what we call PCS, per Permanent Change of Station, I went to Royal Air Force Bentwaters. I went by myself because they Air Force did not allow concurrent travel. Families had to remain at home until I could procure housing, a place for them to live. So it took several months of me searching for a place to live before I was able to bring my family over. So anyway, after about three months, I got the family to England. This was in 1981, and we set up shop, set up our little house in Kesgrave, which was a uh, suburb of Ipswich, which was about a mile from the base where I work. I got assigned to Sea Flight Security, which was a night shift rotating, three three swing shifts three grave shifts and then three days off. So Sea Flight was a group of people. I had 65 people. I was the flight chief. I was in charge of 65 guys and we provided security for uh, aircraft, A-10 aircraft and a weapon storage site at Royal Air Force Bentwaters and another uh, site which was seven miles away on the other side of a place called Rendlesham Forest and that was called RAF Woodbridge and that was a separate uh, landing site where we kept some airplanes. So we had basically four squadrons of aircraft A-10s at Bentwaters and two squadrons at Woodbridge. So when my shift started, I sent a contingent of guys in the trucks over to Woodbridge and they patrolled Woodbridge base and worked uh, the shift that we were scheduled, they, uh, swings or graves. We worked again, three swings, three graves, and then three days off. So as the flight chief in charge, I would go back and forth between the bases. I would check on the troops and run exercises, make sure that everybody was doing their job properly. And Rendlesham Forest was in between. Well, there's a documentary on TV hosted by Bryant Gumbel and a couple of the guys that are in that documentary had a close encounter in Rendlesham Forest in December of 1980, which was before I got there. But those guys that had that event were still at Bentwaters and they worked for me when I became the Sea Flight Flight Chief. Jim Penniston, John Burroughs, Edward Kabiab, uh, Lieutenant Colonel Charles Halt were all people that were involved in the incident at Rendlesham Forest and you can watch that on TV. They've showed it a number of times on the History Channel and they now have a book out about 
their sighting of UFO in Rendlesham Forest. Back to my event, it was around the same time, late November, early December of 1981, and I got a call from my supervisor at Woodbridge saying something has come down on the airbase. Now this is at night, a grave shift, it's dark, we're in England, cloud cover, heavy, uh, very, very dark. Many times the fog rolls in and you can't see your hand in front of your face. So I responded over to Woodbridge when I got the call that something came down on the base and they couldn't find it. So I organized my people into a search party. We got out there in the, in the dark and in the fog at fingertip length apart and walked a line search across the tarmac, across the uh, airfield. Well, after not too long and not being able to see anything and it being totally dark and quiet, I stopped everybody and said, just kneel here and wait till we get some sunlight because it was going to be coming light in the next 30, 45 minutes. Well, we stayed in position. I actually laid down and tried to silhouette my, uh, to see if I could see anything uh, on the horizon, but it was, it was too dark to see anything at all. But the hair on the back of my neck was standing up. I could feel a presence out in front of me, but I could not see anything. All my guys, we stayed in position until we got some light and then I got everybody up and we started moving forward again and not too far 20-30 feet in front of where we were at in our line formation was a line of where somebody walked something had moved across the area the dew the grass you could see a track in the grass where the dew had been shaken off of the grass <clears throat> and on the edge of the tarmac was a fence line. It was a six foot fence with three strands of barbed wire outrigger and right where that line of dew went to the fence line the three strands of barbed wire were broke in a V section like something heavy had gone over the fence and there were some broken branches on the trees on the other side of that. To this day I don't know what it was, but there was something there. That's it. That's it. So that's the story. Um, there's a lot of people that had a lot of different um, experiences during that time. So if you guys want to check out more about the Rendlesham Forest incidents, I'll link the original documentary down in the description box because you can actually watch it on YouTube and it's really interesting. So, and it it actually has the guys in it that my dad was talking about that worked under him, uh, like Jim Pendleston and all those people. Um, they're in the documentary and it's really interesting. So I'll link that down for you guys and I'll also link the book that is by Jim Pendleston. Probably not saying his name right. I can't remember, but I did buy the book. Haven't read it all yet, but I'm really interested in UFO stuff. So hopefully you guys enjoyed this story. Um, it's unfortunate that he didn't actually get to see the craft or anything like that. But um, I know a lot of people will be skeptical, but it's one of those things that my it's my dad. And if my dad says something was there and he felt it, I 100% believe him. He's not the kind of person that would ever make up anything. He's not the kind of person to lie um, or exaggerate an experience. And it took him over 20 years to tell me this story because it was classified by the airbase not to be talked about. And when he finally told me that he had a UFO experience, it literally blew my mind because I was so upset that he had never told me about it before. <laughs> and I find it very interesting because I'm totally into UFO stuff. So the fact that it took him so long to tell me on top of, I know my dad 
his personality and the person that he is, he, he wouldn't lie about something like that. So hope you guys found this interesting and make sure you check out those links down below that I'm gonna put there for you. So that's it for today's episode. Thanks for watching my little broccoli bites and I'll catch you in the next video. Bye. Jim, you're Sergeant James Peniston and Emma John Burroughs entered the forest expecting to find a downed aircraft. How weird is that, that right after my dad tells me his story, the thing comes on the TV about the same incident. That's pretty weird, right? And I'm editing videos right now. That's why I have this in my ear. But anyway, I thought that was pretty funny. I had to share it with you guys. <laughs>